In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Israelites, there are multiple stories in the beast system speculating about our existence. I find it strange that we as a people do not have an accurate view about our origins. The beginning of mankind should be a story every human being know like the back of their hands. The synagogue of Satan, religion, and truth seekers all seem to have a different perspective about our beginnings. The first step every truth seeker must take is not to rely on the B system's wisdom for truth. The only thing you should look for in the B system is for history to align with the word. The Most High said the world was given into the hands of the wicked. The book of Ephesians said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but with principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In addition to the world being wicked and the people who rule the world are workers of iniquity, we should not look to them to tell us the truth. These people have been lying from the beginning. We should not believe the beast system so-called wisdom about the beginning, nor how the Most High operate. They are an enemy to the Most High and will continue to be an enemy until the end comes. The workers of iniquity are just like their leader, Satan. The scripture says Satan is the father of lies and there is no truth in him. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. When the people of the Most High begin to believe the lies that have been fed to them for centuries, they are deceived. The awakening is not here for the people of the Most High to continue to believe the lies from the kingdom of darkness. The awakening will reveal truth. The truth you're discovering in the awakening is going to challenge what you've been conditioned to believe in the B system. The people of the Most High need to stop mixing the lies from the synagogue of Satan with the newfound truth they are discovering in the awakening. When you do this, it causes confusion. Satan is the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Israelites, you have to learn to let the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. It is the job of the Spirit of the Most High to tell you the truth. The Most High do not want to hide anything from you. He wants to tell you the mysteries. That is why the Most High asked his prophets to write down everything they saw in a vision or dream. In addition, preserve the mysteries revealed to them so that the next generation know what is expected of them and to not forget their God who made them. The synagogue of Satan has done a fine job causing the indigenous black people to forget their Elohim. The Most High said to our ancestors, teach the children. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land of which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth.
Teaching your children is how you transfer wisdom, tradition, truth, blessings, and the most highest expectation to the next generation. If our ancestors honored those commandments of preserving our culture and truth, this generation wouldn't be lost nor deceived by the kingdom of darkness lies. Israelites, it is important to teach and bless your children. Stop letting the other species of mankind raise your children. The Most High said to our ancestors, write down the commandments everywhere. Today, the wicked archaeologists refuse to let the dead rest in peace, as well as they are plundering ancient sites to falsify the truth discovered from the ancient writings of our fathers. The workers of iniquity are the ones hiding the truth from you because they do not want you to become free. The truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Protesting, boycotting, and fighting the heathens is not making us free. If these three things mentioned led to our freedom, the indigenous black people would have been freed a long time ago. The truth sets you free. Ever since the Most High began to reveal truth to me, the more liberated I've become. The kingdom of darkness cannot deceive you when you know truth. If the workers of iniquity who discovered the ancient writings told the truth, there wouldn't be a controversy about the origin of mankind. Satan and the synagogue of Satan want you to be confused about the Most High's creation and your identity, because without knowledge you perish. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Satan wants to destroy all of Adam's seed from earth. The scripture said everything hidden will become known and everything that is secret will manifest. When you begin to read the scriptures and the other sacred scriptures that were removed from the Bible, you must be guided by the Most High to understand what you're reading and learning. Without the Holy Spirit, you will believe the lies that were inserted into the scriptures. The Holy Spirit will help you avoid the deceptions written into the scriptures to cause many to stumble. Israelites, let the Most High reveal the truth in the awakening. Stop trying to comprehend what is written with a carnal mind. A carnal mind leads to disobedience and death. If the people of the Most High were listening and allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to them, the doctrines of devils that are spreading in the awakening wouldn't be popular with the remnant, nor would the doctrines of devils overshadow the truth of the Most High's words. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Israelites, it is important to know when reading the scriptures, some words are literal, while most of the written word of the Most High are metaphors. The Messiah spoke in parables. He did this to conceal the mystery from those it wasn't given to know. The only way to decode the parables is if the Holy Spirit is operating in you. The Messiah said it is not given to some to know the mysteries. That is why there's a lot of speculation concerning the origins of mankind, as well as to everything written about the Most High's creation. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. The the behind-the-scenes series has revealed a lot of hidden truth. Some of our people are trying to comprehend the newfound truth with human logic. For example, there are many people who believe there are two beginnings for the human species simply because of the way the scriptures is written in the book of Genesis. There's only one creation of mankind from the Most High, and later on in this message, it will be revealed to you. Before we get into the creation of men, let us go back to the first day of creation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The word of the Most High said, In the beginning the Most High created the heavens and the earth. The scriptures said the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Israelites, 
the first two verses reveal a lot to us. It was on the first day the Most High created the heavens and the earth. On the first day of creation, the earth consists of water and darkness. The same very scripture called the earth the deep. Today, we know the deep as the below surface of the waters. The earth consists of more water than land. According to the beast culture, the land to water ratio is 72% water and 28% land. It doesn't surprise me that the earth has more water than land. The scriptures did say the earth was void. Nothing was here but water. The scriptures said the spirit of the most high move upon the waters and the most high said, let there be light. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The Bible is constructed in a way to give the reader a basic understanding and knowledge about the Most High. In order for us to know what happened in between what is made available to us in the Bible, we need the Holy Spirit as well as the hidden books that was removed and slandered. To get the behind the scenes events that took place on the first day of creation, the Most High revealed the information to Enoch. The second book of Enoch give us a little more insight about the beginning to the Most High's creation. The Most High desired to create visible things from the invisible. The Most High command his living creature, Adoyo, to become visible, and out of the belly of the invisible living creature, Adoyo, came forth light. I commanded in the very lowest parts that visible things should come down from invisible, and Adoyo came down very great, and I beheld him, and lo, he had a belly of great light. And I said to him, Become undone, add oil, and let the visible come out of thee. And he came undone, and a great light came out, and I was in the midst of the great light. And as there is born light from light, there came forth a great age, and showed all creation which I had thought to create. Israelites, the Most High has visible and invisible creatures. In addition, everything the Most High creates is living, regardless of its visibility. The living creature, Adoyo, was invisible, but when he became visible, he was light. The Most High set the light above his throne. The Most High revealed to Enoch that above the light there is nothing else. And I placed for myself a throne, and took my seat on it, and said to the light, Go thou up higher and fix thyself high above the throne and be a foundation to the highest things. And above the light there is nothing else. And then I bent up and looked up from my throne. The scriptures always describe a bright light that surrounds the Most High. The same way the Most High command his invisible living creature add oil to become visible and he was light, the Most High did the same for darkness. According to the book of Enoch, the Most High command his invisible living creature called Arches to become visible. Out from him came forth darkness. The Most High sent him below to be a foundation. And I said, Be open, Arches, and let there be born from thee. And he came undone, and age came forth, very great and very dark bearing the creation of all lower things. And I saw that it was good and said to him, go thou down below and make thyself firm and be for a foundation for the lower things. And it happened and he went down and fixed himself and became the foundation for the lower things. And below the darkness, there is nothing else. We now know that darkness is the foundation to the most High's creation. Below darkness, there is nothing else. The Bible revealed to us that the earth was covered in darkness, making the earth the deep, the foundation to the Most High's creation. The Bible doesn't reveal when the waters were created. However, the book of Enoch said on the first day, the Most High created the waters from the combination of darkness and light. Chapter 17 of the second book of Enoch gives detailed information to how the waters were created. The Most High called darkness night, and called the light day. 
And I separated between light and between darkness, that is to say, in the midst of the water, hither and thither, that I said to the light that it should be the day, and to the darkness that it should be the night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Azras referred to the darkness that was upon the earth as a spirit, which confirmed Enoch's account of how the Most High created the visible from the invisible. And I said, O Lord, that spake is from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and said thus, Let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was a perfect work. And then was the spirit, and darkness and silence were on every side. The sound of man's voice was not yet formed. Then commendest thou a fair light to come forth of thy treasures, that thy work might appear. On the first day, the Most High created the heavens and the earth, as well as separating darkness from light. Asterisk revealed that the sounds of man's voice was not yet formed. That is because man was not created until the sixth day. On the first day of creation, we now know that there were living, invisible creatures. Asdras refer to these invisible creatures as spirits. In several of my videos, I have said that everything is a spirit. What the workers of iniquity calls personality or emotions are actually spirits. Everything the Most High created is living. A lot of people are having trouble comprehending this truth. Most people are using the carnal mind to understand spirit. The flesh cannot understand spirit. That is why so many people are deceived through unbelief. The time has come for the people of the Most High to ask their Elohim to help their unbelief. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. If darkness and light comes from invisible creatures that are spirits, that would mean the wind is a spirit, hate is a spirit, depression is a spirit. Once the people of the Most High begin to view the world in the correct perspective, they will begin to have greater victory over their enemies. Mental illness will no longer have a stronghold over the people's lives in these last days. The people will become equipped to fight against unclean spirits with the word of the Most High. Spirits are disembodied. That is why they are invisible. Our spirit is invisible. The Most High made us from both nature, visible and invisible. The flesh, our body, is visible. Our spirit that live in our earthly body is invisible. The Most High did many works on the first day of creation. Remember, Israelites, one day is equivalent to 1,000 years. But beloved... Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The second day of creation is when the Most High created the firmament and the heavenly hosts. It was also on the second day when Satan rebelled and he was cast to earth. Let us reveal what the Bible said about the second day. Then we will go behind the scenes to find out what happened on the second day of creation. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. The Bible said, The Most High made the firmament, the purpose of the firmament is to divide the waters in the deep with the waters that are above the deep. The Most High called the firmament heaven. On the second day, the Most High also gathered the waters that are below the firmament into one. The waters that were gathered together are the waters we see today, all of the ocean waters and the seas in the world. The book of Enoch, as well as the book of Asterisk, give the same account with the Bible of the Most High creating the firmament to divide the waters that are below us and above us. The book of Enoch revealed that in the first heaven, above the clouds, is where the waters that are above us is located. 
Enoch went on to say the waters that are above is greater than the seas in the earth. It came to pass when Enoch had told his sons that the angels took him onto their wings and bore him up onto the first heaven and placed him on the clouds. And there I looked, and again I looked higher and saw the ether, and they placed me on the first heaven and showed me a very great sea, greater than the earthly sea. The waters play a significant role in our creation. Even our human body consists of water. Just like the earth that is 72% water and 28% land, an adult male body consists of 60% water and an adult female is around 55%. Generally, a person can survive three to four days without water. The Most High created Adam out of the four elements. Water is one of the elements. The second book of Enoch gives us a little more detail about the second day of creation. The book of Enoch revealed once the Most High divided the waters with the firmament, he then gathered the waters that are below the firmament and created the rocks that became land and called the rocks earth. The rocks and land that are below the waters the Most High called the abyss. And then I made firm the heavenly circle and made that the lower water which is under heaven collect itself together into one whole and that the chaos become dry, and it became so. Out of the waves I created rock, hard and big, and from the rock I piled up the dry, and the dry I called earth, and in the midst of the earth I called abyss, that is to say the bottomless. I collected the sea in one place and bound it together with a yoke. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. The waters that surround us according to the Most High is the deep. The land which we live on, the Most High called earth. The abyss, the bottomless, is where Sheol is located. There are many occasions the Most High open up the earth and the wicked men are swallowed up and descend into the realm of Sheol. I've noticed that the workers of iniquity remove the word Sheol from the scriptures. Some scriptures call Sheol the pits or hell. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. The book of Ezekiel confirmed that Sheol is located in the mix of the deep. Sheol is the realm where the souls of all men go in the afterlife. To learn more about Sheol, watch my video about the afterlife. This message is focused on the deep, the waters. The Most High desired to create creatures that are visible and invisible. The creatures that live in the deep, the waters, were not created until the fifth day of creation. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. The Most High created all the creatures that live in the waters on the fifth day. The Bible does not give us any information about the living creatures that live in the waters until later on in certain books in the Bible. During the time of creation, the Bible made it seem as if the Most High created only the visible animals. However, the book of Asterisk revealed the name of the two living creatures that were also created on the fifth day that live in the waters. Remember, the Most High has visible and invisible creatures. The invisible creatures are spirits. When you read in the scriptures about living creatures, know that they are invisible creatures. 
The two invisible creatures the book of Acts just revealed were created on the fifth day were Leviathan and Enoch. For the dumb water and without life brought forth living things at the commandment of God that all people might praise thy wondrous works. Then didst thou ordain two living creatures, the one thou callest Enoch and the other Leviathan. I find it interesting that the book of Asterisk called the male living creature Enoch. The book of Enoch as well as the Bible called the male living creature that live in the waters Behemoth. And on that day were two monsters parted, a female monster named Leviathan to dwell in the abyss of the ocean over the fountains of the waters. But the male is named Behemoth, who occupied with his breast a waste wilderness named Duodane on the east of the garden where the elect and righteous dwell, where my grandfather was taken up, the seventh from Adam, the first man whom the Lord of Spirits created. Behold now, Behemoth, which I made with thee. He eateth grasses and ox. Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar, and the sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. The book of Enoch said that Leviathan is a female, and his companion Behemoth is the male. Both of these creatures transgress against the Most High. The Most High reserved great judgments against both of these living sea creatures. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent, even Leviathan that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Leviathan plays a major role in the end times. The scriptures reference the beast that comes out of the sea, whom the dragon will give its powers. Also, the book of Revelation referenced the two witnesses that will be murdered by the dragon that lives in the sea, Leviathan. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. To the people who believe the invisible living creatures that dwell in the sea are just mythical creatures that don't exist, you are deceived by the lies of the synagogue of Satan. Walt Disney and countless other Hollywood executives and filmmakers have shown you in movies and animation of the invisible spirits that lives in the waters. These spirits are known as marine spirits and they are very real. Do not believe anyone who tell you marine spirits don't exist. I will show you how these spirits are ruling our present society today. Spirits have the ability to possess people. A person can have legions of unclean spirits in them. The Bible has given us many stories to confirm this to be true. The man in the tomb is an excellent example I like to use. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Unclean spirits can also occupy the animals as well. Remember when the devil Legion, who occupied the man in the tomb, asked the Messiah to go into the pigs? Be careful of the meat you consume. That is how many of you are plagued with the spirit of infirmity. The spirit of infirmity plagued you with all kinds of illnesses. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. The man in the tomb is described in the scriptures to be a man who suffers from a mental illness. The unclean spirits who occupy him cause him to harm himself. Mental illness is a sign of a person being occupied with legions of unclean spirits. Mental illness is not the only way to know if a person is occupied with many unclean foul spirits. In this example, marine spirits. Today, the beast culture is plagued with millions, if not billions of people occupied with marine spirits. 
Sorcerers love to use witchcraft marine powers to destroy a person. Your dream life would reveal if you're being tormented by witchcraft marine powers. If you see yourself next to the waters, in a pool, swimming in dirty waters, giving birth in the dream, seeing animals that live in the waters, and countless sexual acts in the dream, those are a few examples, but there are many dreams that will reveal to you how marine spirits are destroying your life. Many of you are married to these spirits. This is known as spirit spouse. A spirit spouse will cause you to have failed relationships and make it difficult to get married. Witchcraft powers using marine spirits is one way the workers of iniquity in the beast system is causing division between the black man and the black woman. They are making the other species of mankind appear to be more beautiful and appealing than the counterpart the Most High gave them. The marine kingdom is the largest division in Satan's kingdom. Remember, the world has more water than land. These wicked spirits do not confine themselves to the waters. They are involved in our lives and some of these spirits control governments and nations. Marine spirits are the cause to the perversion we are seeing in today's society. All sexual sins come from marine spirits. The statues the heathens place next to the bodies of waters, ponds, and anywhere with water are always nude. This is to invoke lust. New York has a humongous marine spirit over it. Look into the Statue of Liberty. When the Most High give you an eye to see, you will see the symbolism. Marine spirits are responsible for the rise of the alphabet community. If you don't believe marine spirits exist, look at the confusion that surrounds sexual orientation, the sexual identity, removing the barrier to what is a male and female. All of this is caused by marine spirits. Everyone who submits to these ideologies and practice what the beast culture teach on sexuality are occupied with marine spirits. Another example of marine spirits corrupting the beast culture today, the book of Job said, Behemoth is over all the children of pride. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Who are the people whose slogan and way of life is pride? Israelites and indigenous black people, open your eyes. The truth is right in front of your face. If you want to get to the root of any problem, you have to look into the spiritual. The root cause to the alphabet community's increase of perversion are marine spirits. We all need to pray against marine spirits in these last days. We are all witnessing the consequences of not casting out these devils. Israelites, know that marine spirits are not little devils. This kind requires fasting to get rid of. Don't go against a marine spirit unequipped. Spiritual warfare is required for this kind. Albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Only 5% of the waters have been explored by humans. The workers of iniquity have no idea what lies in the deep. Israelites, do not let the synagogue of Satan tell you about the world you live in. Ask the Most High and he will reveal it to you. The deep today is the waters. In the deep resides the marine kingdom. This kingdom has visible and invisible creatures. There is more to the Most High's creation than what religion has taught you as well as the school system. This message was about the waters, the deep. I will continue to talk about the other days of creation and going behind the scenes to get to the root. Stay tuned. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee.